Tagging has been improved in Revit MEP 2017 to include abbreviations that indicate ductwork justification. In the mechanical settings we see the addition of a number of options that can be set and also included in tags. For each option the user can edit the value to set an appropriate abbreviation. This abbreviation is the information that will ultimately end up in the finished tag. Tags are added as normal, although you will notice the addition of the abbreviation set previously in the mechanical settings. By selecting the ductwork to utilize the justification tools, we can set the run of this ductwork to top. After reapplying the tag, we can see that it shows the abbreviation for flat on top. Using the justification tool once more, we can see that by setting the justification to bottom and then reapplying the tag, the appropriate abbreviation shows flat on bottom. And finally, we set our ductwork back to center justified. Applying the tag one last time, we can see the abbreviation goes back to the equal symbol. Looking at the properties, we can set the height offset to change the tag abbreviation to show either set up or set down as shown. Setting the height offset back to its original value will change the nature of the fitting and of course the tag abbreviation. Changes to the electrical aspect of Revit MEP 2017 can be found in the electrical settings. Firstly, we see the option to predefine the circuit rating. Previously, this value would have been edited from either the completed circuit or from the panel schedule. This is still, however, a global setting and the value set here will be applied to all circuits and if editing is required, then the usual methods will still apply. Secondly, under the heading of load calculations, we see two options for choosing the method to calculate the apparent load. The user can choose between the sum of the true load and the reactive load, or the sum of the apparent load, each option showing a sample image. With improved functionality added to the fabrication tools in Revit MEP 2017, we see additional options available to control the appearance and visibility of fabrication elements. In Visibility Graphics Override, we see the addition of multiple categories to control fabrication elements where previously there was only one. Also, the only way to offer advanced control previously was to use filters. These options have subcategories to offer additional control, the same as Revit elements. Also, the user has options to override the color, line type, half tone, and detail level. From within the fabrication settings, the user can choose the color for connection indicators. The connection indicators show which direction a fitting will be pointed as it is rotated. Blue pointing toward the user, green pointing away from the user and red being flat. With a requirement for fabrication elements to be exported from Revit to any other CAD formats, we now see options in the export setup to control the output. The user can now include fabrication elements in custom export settings along with the Revit elements.
The Design to Fabrication workflow sees a new tool for converting Revit design elements to fabrication level elements. The elements can be selected individually or as a group. After selecting the elements to be converted, simply pick the button from the ribbon. You will then be prompted to select the appropriate standard for conversion. The standards available will depend on the configuration used and the services loaded into Revit. After conversion is complete, you will see that the parts are not optimised into standard lengths. For this, simply use the Optimise tool. Again, this can be performed on individual elements or groups. When optimization is complete, we see the original Revit design intent model converted into standard duct lengths for fabrication. We see improved productivity in Revit MEP 2017 when using the fabrication tools with the new root and fill tool. By placing ductwork parallel to an existing run and using the root and fill tool, the user will be presented with a number of options to complete the connection. Simply select the corresponding endpoints. After the first placement, there are three options to connect as shown on the tooltip. By changing the position of the elements, the root and fill tool offers additional options. Here we see 10 options to choose from. Cycling through these options sees the layout changed based on the available fittings as determined in the fabrication's parts palette. We cycle through until we find the most appropriate layout and pick the green tick to select. By placing ductwork perpendicular to an existing run, the user will be presented with a number of options to cut into the ductwork. When the root and fill tool is selected, you'll see that there is no apparent connection available. Ensure that cut into option is selected from the ribbon. Again, we can cycle through the number of options available to make this connection and also note the options available in the fabrications parts palette. Select the corresponding ductwork and make your option choice from the tooltip as shown. The improved productivity continues in Revit MEP 2017 with useful tooltip modification options. After length optimization, the parts may not be split at favourable or uniform points as you can see from this example. Select any part and a tooltip will display giving you the option to change the order of the optimised parts. We use the fabrication parts palette to add a fitting. We then use the Revit MEP Properties palette to change the size of the fitting. And finally, the Revit MEP Type Selector to change the type of fitting, giving a look and feel very similar to using native Revit elements. In addition to this, the part can be manipulated using on-screen tooltips. The parts orientation can be flipped and it can be rotated around the centre line of the duct it is attached to. The orientation increment can be set by editing the value at the centre of the tooltip. With usual part placement, and tools such as optimization and the tooltip modification options, 
we can see the productivity gains available to us when using fabrication parts in REV MEP 2017. Supports for fabrication elements in REV MEP 2017 have been improved to attach directly to sloped structural elements regardless of orientation. Placement of the supports is simple and straightforward as each one aligns itself with and sizes to the associated ductwork, also utilising the placement dimensions associated with the positioning of native rivet elements. As we look at the model from different aspects, we see the result of the supports attached to a sloped structural slab whilst attached to ductwork with varying orientations. Tagging in River MEP 2017 now includes additional options for tagging fabrication elements. Here we see the additional categories and the corresponding tag loaded against each. Additional tags can be loaded into the project in the usual manner. Here we see a range of tags added specifically for fabrication elements. These tags can then be applied and modified in the same way as the tags applied to regular Revit elements. Here we see tags that have been modified to show the size, the service abbreviation and the length. With fabrication scheduling, previously everything was found under one category. Now we see a number of additional categories added for fabrication scheduling. We also see fields specific to fabrication element scheduling that include information such as reference level. A completed fabrication schedule with filters applied shows only the ductwork. Within the schedule, we can see the new field of reference level, in addition to the standard fabrication lengths as shown. While an unfiltered schedule displays information that includes fittings as well as ductwork, effectively combining what would have been two separate categories of native Revit elements.